Morale at NASA is perhaps at a 20-year low. Columbia was obviously a human tragedy and way worse than the budget is awful. But it's bad. We have to keep things together. This is a survival mode budget. But it's not clear that much is surviving. This is a frank share of Vice Chair NASA APAC Grant Tremblay on X recently about NASA's budget starvation. Obviously, this is the inevitable consequence that a national agency must face when it has been blackmailed by its main contractor, Boeing, for decades. It's unfathomable. Why was NASA willing to pay Boeing $5.1 billion to get an incompetent spacecraft, Starliner, which is notorious for long delays and a series of technical failures? Worse, keep in mind that this is not its final failure. NASA is facing new trouble with the Boeing Starliner. Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. When is the earliest the Starliner might come back? NASA and Boeing recently have come up with some possibilities. According to Steve Stitch, manager of NASA's commercial crew program, the absolute latest Starliner could return, with Wilmore and Williams would be mid-August. You know, the big driver uh, obviously is the, the handover that we have coming up between Crew 8 and Crew 9, uh, which is in mid-August. Ideally, they should come sooner, though. You know, obviously, a, a few days before uh, that launch opportunity, we would need to get um, Butch and Sunny home on Starliner. Of course, everything needs to be based on the data gathered from the tests. Thus, the end of July could be a feasible option. We're really working to try to follow the data and see um, when's the earliest that we could we could target for undock and landing. You know, I, I think some of the data suggests optimistically maybe it's by the end of July, but we'll just follow the data each step at a time and then at the right time figure out um, when the right undock opportunity is. So how close are they to the date? At the time I made this report, NASA and Boeing engineers were evaluating results from last week's engine tests at NASA's White Sands Test Facility in New Mexico. As the team works through plans to return the agency's Boeing crew flight test from the International Space Station in the coming weeks, the ongoing ground analysis is expected to continue throughout the week, working with a reaction control system thruster built for a future Starliner spacecraft. Ground teams fired the engine through similar in-flight conditions the spacecraft experienced on the way to the space station. The ground tests also included stress case firings and replicated conditions Starliner's thrusters will experience from undocking to deorbit burn, where the thrusters will fire to slow Starliner's speed to bring it out of orbit for landing in the southwestern United States. Talking about what's next after the test, Steech said, We collected an incredible amount of data on the thruster that could help us better understand what is going on in flight. Next, our team has moved into engine teardowns and inspections which will provide additional insight as we analyze the results and evaluate next steps. In parallel with the ground test review, integrated ground teams also are preparing for an in-depth agency flight test readiness review, which will evaluate data related to the spacecraft's propulsion system performance before its return to Earth. The date of the agency review has not yet been solidified, but they plan to discuss the testing and analysis work in detail during a media briefing next week. It sounds like both NASA and Boeing are demonstrating their determination to bring astronauts home at the end of this month. Additionally, they also committed not to repeat the same mistake on Starliner's fourth flight, Starliner's first official mission. We're not going to go fly another mission like this with the helium leaks, Steech, manager for NASA's commercial crew program, said during a June 18th teleconference. Starliner was expected to start its first operational mission to the ISS in early 2025. Known as Starliner 1, it is manifested to carry at least three astronauts to the ISS for a normal six-month mission. To get Starliner 1 taking place, the current vehicle must come back with the crew safely first. NASA and Boeing will then lay out all the work in front of them to figure out what the path forward is. There will likely be a lot of work to be done, especially because Starliner's performance on its crew flight test is very poor. As you know, Starliner was originally scheduled to return to Earth in mid-May, but an indefinite delay pushed the date to the end of July. This definitely is not bloating very well for the first official mission in February 2025, which is simultaneous with the Crew-10 mission, NASA's 10th operational flight on Dragon. 
To be honest, SpaceX is scheduled to fly their Crew-10 mission late next summer, but the prep timeline has been accelerated to move it in parallel with Starliner 1. Thanks to that, in the emergency, Dragon would serve as a lifeboat for Starliner if it fails. However, with the current status of the Boeing spacecraft, NASA has to consider carefully the switch of both missions' timelines, which will cause traffic and internal schedules on the ISS to be disturbed. Or, although Starliner can be certified in time for the February mission, it would likely conduct just a handful of flights before NASA retires the space station in 2030. It could still be used to service the Orbital Reef Orbiting Station, led by principal partners Sierra Space Corporation and Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin. However, this is a very ambitious project due to Orbital Reef's very large scale, with a pressurized volume of up to 830 cubic meters, roughly three-fourths of the ISS, the largest space station ever built. Building a space station of such size is inherently complicated, and this will be much more complicated if Blue Origin and Sierra Space rule out SpaceX and go with Starliner. I believe that Jeff Bezos is smart enough to know which one brings more benefits to him. These sparked the concern that Boeing would not fully fill out Starliner's manifest. There is even a rumor that Boeing will cancel the Starliner project soon, evidence that this giant group has the intention to sell its cash cow, ULA, to Blue Origin as a way to eliminate its resources in the space sector. This way they can focus more on aviation, their main field. The failure of Boeing's Starliner is not something unfathomable, especially when you look at its dark, long history. Starliner is a rival of SpaceX's Crew Dragon in NASA's commercial crew program in 2014, while SpaceX, the inexperienced one, got its Crew Dragon to the finish line first and has carried 50 people to orbit since 2020. Boeing, a legacy company, stumbled right outside of the gate. It has continued toiling with Starliner, playing a veritable game of whack-a-mole to address one engineering problem after another. An only partly successful uncrewed test flight in 2019 saw the ship get to space but failed to dock with the ISS. The second chance for Boeing Starliner called Orbital Flight Test 2, an uncrewed demonstration mission also had a rocky journey similar to its third test flight, Crewed Flight Test. It wasn't until May 2022 that the company launched a successful uncrewed test mission, slipping nearly two years compared to the initial schedule. The final challenge, named Boeing Crewed Flight Test, came as Boeing faced serial woes on its commercial aircraft side after two crashes of its 737 line in 2018 and 2019 respectively claimed 346 lives. And yet, a door blew off a 737 MAX jet during a flight in January 2024. A series of serious accidents forced Boeing to sit on the hot seat. As predicted, the 737 failed multiple Federal Aviation Administration audits in the wake of the incident. Much worse, two whistleblowers who had come out against the company regarding production and safety issues suddenly died, one on May 2 of a severe infection and the other in March of an apparently self-inflicted gunshot wound. Although Boeing did not assume any responsibility for the affair, the company has borne the brunt of public outrage. Perhaps to save its face, both NASA and Boeing's space divisions have tried to put the public off the scent with the Starliner launch. Finally, they took the vehicle off the ground successfully. But how to bring it back to Earth, perhaps? Both still cannot give the correct answer. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.